This is the Flabbergasted Podcast, where we just can't believe you haven't seen it. Every episode, we discuss a movie that one of us has seen and the other hasn't. Follow us on Instagram, at FlabberPod, and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. I'm your host, Jessica. Let's get to it. We're talking about the 2003 film School of Rock today. And the little blurbage is fired from his band and hard up for cash. Guitarist and vocalist Dewey Finn finagles his way into a job as a fifth grade substitute teacher at a private school where he secretly begins teaching his students the finer points of rock and roll. The school's hard nosed principal is righteously suspicious of Finn's activities, but Finn's roommate remains in the dark about what he's doing. Where are you reading this from? That's the longest blurb I've ever seen in my entire life. It is this app called call sheet okay i love it it's better than imdb in my opinion but it's uh not free right it is not free i don't remember how much it is call sheet sponsor us freemium yeah so call my people call sheet you can subscribe if you want to it ten dollars a month a year that's better but fun fact they recently added the heights of actors (laughs) Fun fact, there's now a whole section just for feet pics on call sheet. It's amazing, but... I'm going to tell you right now, I'm never once during the recording of this going to be referring to that character as Dewey or Dewey Finn. It's just Jack Black in my notes. Jack Black, yeah. It's Jack Black He's very Jack Black. Yes, very Jack Blacky. Um, This was directed by Richard Linklater and stars Jack Black, Joan Cusack, Sarah Silverman, and a young Miranda Cosgrove. Mike White. And Mike White. He plays... As Mr. Schneebly. Ned, yeah, the real Ned. The original Schneebly. Mm -hmm. It is rated PG-13, in case you were curious about that. Seems like kind of a stretch. Did they use their F-bomb? Not that I can remember. I don't think so. Don't you get one in PG-13? Isn't that how it works? That's what I am familiar with. Maybe that's more recent than... Maybe that rule came into place after 2003. Okay, Brogy, you had never seen this movie before. Had Accurate. you heard about it? Yes. Yeah, and I knew the concept, I guess, broadly. I didn't know any of the finer points of it. I don't know. I just, again, I mean, this is kind of a broken record thing with Flabbergasted, but, like, I have can count on a couple of fingers the times I've been to the movies to watch a comedy. Like, that's just not really what I've ever done. Uh, it's usually been more fantasy or sci-fi or just like a drama of some kind. So I don't, it just, it totally missed me by 2003. I was probably when the movie came out, I was probably 11. Yeah. So that's even, you know, and this is before streaming or anything, unless one of my buddies had it on DVD and really wanted to put it on. You wouldn't have seen it. It just didn't happen. Yeah. And my, my dad certainly wasn't renting this from family video. So. Right. This is one I'm sure, I don't remember seen it in the theater but i'm sure i did because it came out right around a time i would have been going to the movies a lot Mm -hmm. and i would have seen the previews and just thought oh that sounds funny like let's go see it i'm pretty open to all genres of movies to go see as long as they're not too whimsical keep your whimsy out of my movies i don't know i feel like the jury's still out on whimsical I would also say at that point in my life, I was seeing a lot more movies. I'm a little more selective now. Really? I think There's so. There's a time that you were less selective than this. Yes, which wow. is saying a lot because yeah. I'm... Pretty omnivorous. Yeah, I like sure. a lot. Well, I mean, this is kind of going to be my vibe for this entire podcast, but like... Here's my first, my first note is this first guy has to be a replicant because it was copy and pasted from Blade Runner, which was my last notes. Um, My second note is that I can tell when the Jack Black jokes are supposed to be funny. I can tell when I'm supposed to be laughing and I am just not laughing. Like that's just, I don't, I'm just watching a guy go, school of rock. Like, and it's not, it's not doing anything for me. It's not doing anything for me. I was watching this and I rewatching it right for the podcast. And mm-hmm. I told Jeremy, I'm like, huh, I never realized how much of like this Jack Black sarcasm was like sort of infused into my own sarcasm delivery. Wow. So you so Jack Black is an ur text for your own comedic sensibilities. I don't know what that word means. 
Ur text uh, mean is like prototype. Like you, it's the basis from which an entire concept sprung. Like the original, like Ur being like a Bible era sort of country or something like that. I don't have a problem saying that. I just don't know if there are any other things that went into it maybe mm -hmm. before Jack Black. Got it. I thought you were like, I don't have a problem saying that phrase, but I think maybe you using it. I wasn't sure like what you, oh, what you no. meant. I just yeah, remember sure thinking I'm like, sure, yeah, I'm sure I there's really other connect with that <laughs> sense of like sarcasm, but not taking it too seriously and kind of quippy. Yeah, like, he's very quippy, very punny. Yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not going to list out a big, long joke. Um, and honestly, it's probably because I don't have the attention span to do that. <laughs> I mean, that's probably very true. Mm -hmm. And so I felt, I remembered watching it again. I'm like, oh, yes, I remember why this was so funny and why I really connected with the, the humor in it. I will say he's pretty good at singing. There's a lot of Jack Black singing in this movie, even in non-singing scenes, just kind of singing at people or driving down the road, singing in his van. And he's pretty good. Yes. I, mean, I knew, you know, I'm, I, I've not seen Tenacious D, but I've heard some songs from it and stuff like that. I knew he could sing. Is he really playing the guitar? Yes. Really? Yes. So you researched this? Um, I did at one point in my life, okay. but not recently for this yeah. podcast, but he is a real musician. Yeah. He can really play, I would say he can probably really like read sheet music. Sure. This led into this whole discussion, this concept of teaching music. Jeremy and I both have done slight musical things in our background. Like he was in bands and I was in choir. And we had this whole conversation about how musicians can actually read the notes in sheet music and see what this is supposed to sound like. And this is the timing that it's supposed to have. And yeah, that's what sheet music is. But some people just play like they read like guitar tabs. Am I mm -hmm. saying that right? So yeah. it's just the, the note. Yeah. The chord, the chord yeah. and the finger placement, yeah. but it's not, actually the timing of the music right you so there's a the lot of yeah. different variations of how you learn to play but i think like the very classical foundation and i don't mean classical and like classical music wise but like the very well, original foundation i guess mm -hmm. is what i was going with is mm -hmm. being able to the ur text if you there will. you go the ur text with a t yeah you are hyphen text it's the text okay, and it's the yeah. first one the ur one yes so I'll use that in a sentence later on this week. <laughs> Anyways, we were talking about how all that works. And I was saying he does really well. Like he's actually teaching them like more than just. Absolutely. Like just kind of figuring it out and stumbling along. He's mm -hmm. actually teaching them. Yeah. And Jeremy and I were like, well, that's because he's he is able to convey that so well because he is a musician himself. Mm -hmm. He's not pretending. So the authenticity comes across when you're watching mm -hmm. it, I think. Yeah. There's a lot of words to say that, but it took yeah, me took think, minutes to articulate. Well, I think that kind of goes towards like the, one of the bigger questions that you might have after watching this movie is like, okay, how realistic is it that a sub could get away with this at a hoity prep school, that kind of stuff. And Rachel's like, no, absolutely not. And my thing is that like in 2024, like there's whole schools where like a magnet school or something, like something that is more arts focused that you – come in and immediately tell the principal, hey, I want to do a three-week intensive music thing, and we do music history and music theory. Music has a lot of math applications, and then, of course, there's, like, history and sociological implications, right? Because <clears throat> that's a lot of what they're learning. I mean, he does a whole history of rock, like, application yes. of rock. Like, he starts – I thought it was going to go more towards that, and he was going to accidentally, like – back his way into being a real teacher because he was going to try to get them to get all of the different rock and roll stuff um, that he was going to go into like, you know, countercultural hippie um, or even like the roots of rock in um, largely black music and blues and stuff like that. It didn't go all the way there, but there's absolutely schools now where the parents would be all on board and would love the idea of like really forming a band and doing all of the finance stuff. And the, I mean, cause he finds a job for every kid. I think that's cool. I do think that's cool. And that's one of the things that I wrote down. We had a class before we get too far off this topic. Mm -hmm. We had a class and they were doing new electives, trying different things. And one of them was like music appreciation, I think is what it was called. Sure. And we talked through like different genres of music, 
you know, starting with the very classical and different composers and how that music was like perceived and how it mm-hmm. influenced like the next generation mm-hmm. of music and stuff like that. And yeah. I always thought that was such a cool class because yeah. it really like brought it to life. Like you don't know cause you're just listening to it and you're just jamming out, but there's like this, it's this whole big story behind it, which yeah. was really fun. Yeah. So, any song you listen to is one moment in time that was influenced before it and then had influence on stuff after it. Yes. If it was popular yeah. Enough, yeah. Very cool. The first note that I have about this movie is I love it when they do fun credits at the beginning of the movie. <laughs> and I've said that before. Yeah. It's just fun. I'm glad you liked it. I don't remember what the credits were like at the beginning of this they movie. They were like on the walls of the the bar. Okay. Like the flyers hanging up. Yes. And it's like that kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. I am totally ambivalent. I if, if anything, my only credits-based opinion is that I sometimes think they go too long. And I'm like... Let's start the movie here, yeah. guys. Like, I'm ready to go ahead and go. But you could tell that there was, like, Jack Black, like, singing and playing guitar even, like, early on. So, like, that part was starting, so it wasn't – I wasn't super impatient with it in this case. How did you feel about your introduction to Mr. Dewey Finn? I I don't know. It was like, yep, this is kind of what I figured he was going to be like. He's going to be like, wow, I'm Jack Black. <laughs> And then he was going to be, you know, more annoying than his bandmates. And he was. And I thought they might catch him when he st- stage dove. And then I did predict that he was going to successfully save di- stage dive at the end. Like I had that in the notes. But yeah, it was it was like, OK, yep. And this is how I figured this, this was going to kind of be. For the movie. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. I guess I didn't. Yeah. I would have thought before I saw the movie that maybe it would be a little more school sanctioned. I didn't realize the extent to which. The whole plot is about them sneaking yeah. through the School of Rock thing. Yeah. I would have thought it was. And also, the, I didn't realize at all the private school stuff. I thought it was going to be like anarchy. It's, it's a public school. The teacher, no one really does care what the teachers are doing. And maybe he's a music teacher. Like, I mean, it's not that off base that he they would choose to do something like that. But gave it a little more conflict, I guess. Well, and more representation of sticking it to the man and what Mm -hmm. rock Mm -hmm. by Dewey Finn is about. Yeah. And we'll talk, I think more about that later. That's some of the stuff that doesn't hit all the way home for me. I think is like their interpretation of what rock and roll music is. So, um, Ned's girlfriend, Sarah Silverman, I will say, so Jeremy, when we were talking about it right before, he was like, "Ugh, like she sucks. Like I hate, you know, it's it's frustrating. So I was surprised she got such high billing. My thing is that, Early on, whenever people are, like, being mean to Ned or, like, telling him, like, you should be doing this or this, I I agree with that other person every time. She's absolutely right. He needs to be paying rent and he needs to get a job. And you can still pursue music, but, like, while having a real job that's, you know, paying the bills, uh, his bandmates are like, you're annoying. These guitar solos are too long. It's not helping us get... You know, a record deal, like what we're, trying right. to, what we're trying to do, like we need to be practical about this. And every time I'm like, they're supposed to be the bad guy. And I totally agree with them <laughs> against what he's doing because he's just annoying and slobby and yeah, doofus. Yeah. So that makes me the bad guy. I'm the bad guy of this movie. Um, I think that I don't necessarily disagree with he needs to get a job and he needs to do those things. But her character is just super obnoxious in the way that she's pushy about it. She's really pushy. But yeah. I also feel like we don't know how long they've been dating. Yeah. So we don't know how long she's been witnessing his, what do we want to call it? Like slacker behavior. Yeah, slubbery. Yeah. yeah. His non, I was going to say, um, contributions to yeah. the relationship here, Seems et cetera. Like it's been a while. He's got to be what, 30? I mean, how old are these characters supposed to be? I don't know. I couldn't pin that one yeah. down. I'll tell you this. As a, t- as a public school teacher, and so that's different because it's a private school, there's a lot made early on about Ned, and he's, he's a career man, and he has a job, and this is what he's doing, and he's a substitute teacher. Like, he's, like, pursuing this very professional license. pursuing his teaching license. Yeah. Like, at his age, this, so, like, a he went back to school thing, I don't, the bar, and maybe it's, this is 20 years later, so maybe the bar was higher to be a sub back then, but now it's like, oh, please, Lord, like, do you have any, are you like a convicted sex offender? Because if not, like, we need subs. But they do run a background check on you. Yes, like now? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, you have to pass, like, some basic stuff, but you don't, and you have to have, like, a few college credits or something. It's not just, like, literally anyone, but. 
the but like just the esteem in which they were like, oh look, it's Mister Mister Nine to Five, Mister Career Guy, yeah. Ned Schneebly, substitute itinerant substitute teacher who's finishing his teaching degree, something I like fell backwards into during college. I mean, that's not yeah. that. I, I feel know. like if he was working on his teaching degree, wouldn't he be, be in school? Well, and what is the thing where they have the? I'm totally blanking. Like a practicum, the, you're talking the about student, student teacher. Yeah. Yes. So he would basically be teaching his own team, his own class for yeah. the semester. Yeah. If he was at the very end of it. Yeah. That's like yeah. your last semester. Yeah. So maybe he's still in the classes portions of it. We never see him teach. We never see him be a sub. Unless because it's a private school and it's like that's a different kind of sub, which yeah, I don't know be. why, but maybe it is a yeah. different kind of sub. I can't speak to the to exactly how that would work, but I would imagine given how prestigious the school is supposed to be, you'd think that they would get just like a retired teacher from that school or something. If it was going to be a long-term sub, like yeah. they've got to have better options than just calling the sub hotline right then. The principal would have sat in that first day while they found someone, something like yeah. that, you know, it's a little, little unrealistic, little unrealistic about this there. movie. If also, I may if you say, could just make it out to cash. Yeah. <laughs> I told mm, her sorry. 15 times to make it out to cash. Not going to happen. That was kind of funny. So Jack Black goes to, and pretends to be Ned Schneebly, and now... Schnee, S-H-S-C-H-N-E-E-E. E never mind. Yeah, just call him Mr. S. Just Mr. S. I feel like he would know how to spell his best friend's name. At first just he's just like, out. I'm just gonna do this for like just have recess, like we're just not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna be slacker man. And then he's like, Whoa, but I am passionate because he sees them at music, music class. class. Yeah. And then he's like, You didn't tell me you could play. Yeah. Why would anybody volunteer that right. with no context whatsoever? But right. okay. Okay. Yeah. And I was in band. For, you know, middle school and a year in high school. And, like, I don't know if every kid that plays cello can just be like, oh, here's a bass, and now I'm just, like, a really competent bassist. Like, that seems like a little bit of a stretch. That he just took them out of band class and were like, now you're, like, hardcore, like, into legitimate rock and roll. Where I'm just going, okay, let's do a D chord progression and pick up here and three, two, one. Like, Well, they're both strings. So they, yeah. they translate really easily. I guess it depends on Not, the kid's ability yeah. to. I mean, I agree that she could have figured it out, like, given a yes. week or so. But, like, I transferred from the trombone to baritone. And so it's the same, you know, all the same notes and stuff and structures. But, like, I was having to learn fingerings instead of slide positions. Um, and, you know, it took a week or whatever. He just literally handed her a bass and she's like, all right, I'm playing this now just perfectly. And it's like, okay, like, I guess. But. Fun fact. Mm. I know this is the second time I've said that I'm keeping no, track. Need some fun facts. Cello in this episode and in our Ghostbusters episode. Cello month is back. Dun dun. But the other one didn't have a cello joke. No, I know, which was funny, I thought. Yeah. I did not. I noted it, but I did not laugh at it. I will say that. <laughs> So I don't have a lot of notes for this portion. It just kind of dragged for me this like first third. I was like, let's get let's get some kids playing rock music montages, like some kids being bad at it, getting better at it, some tr some trial and error. I don't know. I wasn't getting quite enough kids playing rock and roll. OK, but before we skip out, I want to talk about how he's doing this. We get this evolution of him before he decides he's going to teach the kids how to play music mm -hmm. or rock music specifically he's all excited about his first day he's leaving to try to start his own band mm -hmm. nobody wants to be in the band with him correct so then he comes back and he's all depressed and just woe is me state in front of the kids and they're like we don't get this at all what right. is going on why would they yeah. why would they right and then he then he sees the music class and then he's like okay let's go this route mm -hmm. so i just didn't know if there was anything you wanted to talk about him being his dreams not being realized and him going downhill yeah i mean i think that like the broad thing where he's just very stuck in what do we say 80s at the latest 70s and 80s rock culture and then expecting that to there to be a real scene for that for him to make a career out of it in 2003. Um, it's not surprising to me that no one wanted to join a band with that version of Jack Black in it, you know. Um, he's he's just kind of, this is part of what dragged for me. He's just kind of moping around. I'm like, OK, we're going to get to the point where you're making a band with the kids. Like, let's just get to let's the making a band with the kids type happening. of thing. Yeah, okay. so I didn't it didn't do a lot for me. 
So he starts with the band. He starts first. He gets the group of I would I would say band, but he really calls them all the band. But he gets the musicians, yeah. their instruments, which I really enjoyed. And then I I did. You pointed out earlier. I like that he said, you know. I'm going to have jobs for the rest of you. Yeah. Which were a little perfunctory. He was a little like, uh, roadies, uh, security. Like he kind of had to come up with it. But the security kids are like the unsung heroes of this band. Like yeah. they are putting in the work. Yes. Regularly. Oh, repeatedly. And so I did respect them a lot. You had the big kid that was like, um, crab from the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's who he reminded me of. Jamie Waylid, I think. It was good. You had Ginger Boy. Um, so, yeah, they were good. I like that. I like that it was. And again, I mean, that's just what it went from unrealistic to realistic because this is project based learning. Like, like there are real names for the kind of stuff that you're doing here where the kids are applying something to like how they like to do it in real life. And we're hitting it from a bunch of different facets. And my buddy Eric teaches at a swanky private school in. Uh, Chicago, and they would definitely do this kind of thing, I mm -hmm. think, because it's so practical. I like how, oh, I just forgot her name, and she didn't want to be security or roadie. I don't remember. Miranda Cosgrove? No, no, no. I Carly. I call her oh, but I Carly. She was, the whole time. I liked her story. You're talking piece about too. Tamika. Tamika, the yes. The taller black girl. Yep. And she's like, I want to sing. And he's like, okay, but I can't let you sing unless you can sing. And which is one realistic, but yeah. two, he wasn't mean about it. Yeah. And she wanted to do it. And he, she sang a little blurb and he's like, okay, great. You're let's do it. Mm -hmm. So I liked that one after a little bit of time with him, they felt comfortable saying, I don't want to do this. I want to do this. Yeah. Cause that takes some confidence on the kid's part to speak up. Mm -hmm. And then I like that he was open to it because that's how you, like, that's how you build trust and, like, progressively. Yeah. But he's not sugarcoating it, right? right? He's like, you, I mean, you're going to, because she's like, oh, I'm too scared. I can't do it at the Battle of the Bands. And he's like, no, you've got to, like, if you're going to be the singer, you have to be able to be on stage and sing. You can't just not do it. Right. Like, that's kind of the whole deal. So, yeah, he, I think he handles that well. And iCarly is the, like, manager, I guess. Yes, which yeah. is really funny. She's like, I researched groupies. This is not okay. Yeah. And which totally threw him for a loop. So I think as much as he helped teach them something, right? And this is like your feel good moment. Like they all pushed him to grow, mm -hmm. which is kind of the yeah punchline. He, he was almost unrealistically progressive. Like from the very beginning, he's like, it's not just like, oh, you're a girl, you can't do this. He's like, no, sweet, you'll be the bassist. And like, like he's very willing to just plug kids into stuff and give them like adult roles. And other than that, he couldn't quite tell the like very effeminate, like gay boy who was doing the outfits and stuff. He couldn't quite be like, hey, uh, this isn't what we're looking for. We need to be doing this. Like he was, he was really, oh, it's not quite like he couldn't spit it out. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that he was progressive in that way because I mean, this is like really reading into it, but he didn't mm -hmm. have the formal, here's what you have to do as a teacher from 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm sure some of these things have loosened up a lot. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he would even see, have seen himself as a teacher. I just was like, Oh, a guy that's coming from his whole life is that rock rock and roll band scene to go directly to being very, I mean, there's no, you know, racist stuff or sexist, I mean, that he's pushing at all. And it's like, wow, well, okay. I mean, a lot of kind of guys in that culture would have been, I would oh, have thought, would have been yeah. a little more. You, you weren't know, even just mm -hmm, talking about musically. You were talking about like mindset. Yes. Yes. yes yeah, yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, because musically he's extremely stuck on like late ACDC and yeah. before. Like he, he's, he can't get past it. I mean, he's not even into grunge. He's, it's just like poison and white snake and stuff. So um, I don't like speaking of musically, I don't like the first song that he, when the kids are like, okay, what's your song? And he's like singing it for them in the room going like, bee, 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 bee. Mm -hmm. he's like, you're not hardcore. The legend of the rent is way hardcore. And you're like, those are terrible lyrics. <laughs> I don't know what this genre is. Like, is this supposed to be good? The kids are like, yeah, that rocks. I'm like, this is dumb. <laughs> this is just dumb. Like it has, the song has to be good. It's, it's a hard needle to thread in a movie where a song is supposed to be good or popular. 
you have to actually make that song good or popular, or, or it takes you out of it a little bit. Isn't this the whole thing in that movie that you guys like that I haven't seen with Tom Hanks, maybe? That, that thing you do? do. And the song is actually pretty good, right? Like real life, pretty good. And so that helps, you know, if it was, if it was just like some annoying song, but it like blew up on the charts and you'd be like, this is unrealistic. And so when the kids like are all bye like, bye bye birdie. Yeah, this rocks. I have not seen bye bye birdie. Okay. That's for another time, but there's, yeah. Put it on the list. I don't know that it's a, on the list, but the whole idea is it's Elvis's last song and it doesn't even have to be a good song. Because it's his last song mm -hmm. that he's going to record before he goes to war. Yeah. So everybody's going to buy it anyways. Right. So it doesn't matter if it's yeah. good. Just churn something out. Yeah. Yeah. I did like how they made him sort of audition the song that he was singing. They're like, well, what if you suck? Yeah, that was very in line with these being like sort of high-minded prep kids. Like, mm -hmm. well, if we're going to do something, we have to do it well. And like, we have to make sure. Yeah. yeah. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. I thought that was pretty good. But then the problem is that they liked it. Well, I mean, they're also still kids. Okay, well, which one? you have to audition. We're going to accept anything that you do, but you have to audition. I mean, I think he was on key for the most part. Yeah, you know, I guess. He played the song, and they were... I think the whole point was they just didn't want to do it just because he said kind of thing. So then we get to kind of the middle, like, half of the movie, which is... Some very predictable little setbacks. Oh, we got to pretend to be doing real class when the principal comes in. The Santa Marina. That was Marina. like, okay. Yeah, when he's, yeah, he's doing that. Or he, they have the no, recording. it's not. <laughs> they have the recording. Yeah. Yeah. I did, um, I laughed. I think I laughed twice that I wrote down. And one of them was when he ended that with, and nine is, is magic, magic number. number. I was like, Schoolhouse Rock. Like, he should have been doing Schoolhouse Rock the whole time. But yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, the, uh, it takes him a while to get a band name. I, I was really excited when guitarist boy, um, his dad's yelling at him yes. in the, in the parking, parking lot. lot. And I was like, okay, we're, we're going to get into the pressure these kids are under from home. And, um, you know, the, w the reason they are the way they are and the, the mindsets of the parents and sort of overcoming that, like little rich kids have problems too. Like we're going to get some of that. And then we just didn't. I think we got more of that with Roz saying you can't mess with these parents. If they can't you do, have a sense of humor. You do that, one yeah. thing wrong, like they're coming for your head. Yeah. Roz being the principal, FYI. Yeah, the John Cusack super uptight principal. Yes. Yes. Yeah. They tried to introduce a couple of other teachers. We're at lunch. We're in the teacher's lounge a little bit. Did that, Does that stuff land for you? Not specifically outside of the fact that he – becomes friendly with them and they mm -hmm. are accepting to him. Yeah. Which is just like, he's doing a good job of pretending to be a teacher. Yeah. I guess it's just supposed to show he's getting invested. He is pretty good at acting in these different situations where he's put on the spot. I mean, surprised he is surprisingly good at that. Well, I think for him, it's also this kind of area where you can be likable. Right. Like, Maybe he doesn't realize that he can be likable because his band kicked him out. Mm -hmm. Ned, Sarah Silverman, so weird. Yeah, yeah, digging on him all the time. So we're like, these are the positive traits of Jack Black. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, you know, life sucks sometimes, but you're not alone out there, mm -hmm. kind of like. Mm -hmm. Other people have some whimsy in their hearts, too. Yeah. Um, I don't like, well, I, it's not that I didn't like it. It's the, the scenes when the principal is coming in and like observing him and like micromanaging that hits home from a teacher perspective is like that sort of like tightening that you get whenever the principal's in the room, even if they're nice about it. I just got yeah. observed last week on maybe Thursday or something, Wednesday or something like that. Um, and the, my principals are really nice and they're always like very positive about how all that stuff's going, but you do tighten up a little bit. And so she walks in and is my, she's micromanaging him, but it's also right, which is like, let's see some curriculum. Oh, you're playing guitar. Okay. Like I need to see an example no, of like, this. Like that's, He's like, we're not music. What? No, there's no music yeah, happening. There's oh, a guitar well, behind hmm, There's a guitar right there. <laughs> He's, he goes, I think she's snorting crack cocaine or yeah. something like that. Which um, you would never say. Yeah, that's insane. <laughs> that, that is not okay. Yeah. You would totally get in trouble for that. Yeah. And he, 
and his idea of a math lesson is just to sing single digit addition and subtraction questions to these kids and also six times a billion. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I'm watching it and not that it's the math piece, but I'm like having trouble tracking what he's actually asking for. Yeah. When he, as he's singing it, I'm like, but what's, what are you actually wanting here? And it's like word problem for you. Yeah. yeah. And the kids are all like right on with whatever he's asking. I'm yeah. like, way to follow that kids. Like, good job. I, I don't know. I was kind of like, it was quite like, what's three plus four or whatever. Like it's like, I don't <laughs> it was, it wasn't, it wasn't doing much for me. So then he takes her out to the bar. He drives Roz to the bar and it's, and then he goes and punches in Stevie Nicks because he'd heard that she freaked out and did Stevie Nicks impressions like yeah. previously. And then the, we, we, we get like two minutes of Joan Cusack, like, looking around a bunch and like sipping a beer with both hands and like coughing as soon as she takes a little tiny sip. And I was like, yeah. is this supposed to be funny? Like what's happening here? She eventually drinks more of it. But the first 30 seconds of her, like going like, like her where eyes are we get at? All big. This is very weird. Yeah. What are we doing here? She, she's no just idea. At a, like pretty regular dive bar, I thought. And it's just losing her mind about drinking like a light beer. Um, I thought that was weird. I didn't. I think that's because she's so uptight because of the position kind of thing. You're telling me she doesn't go home and drink a half bottle of white wine every night like I mean, to wind she down? she might do that at home. Yeah. But one, wine is not beer. I think that is a very well-known fact. I'm aware that wine is not beer. I'm just saying that the concept of drinking alcohol, the wind down for someone that's super wound up is. But I also wonder if it's like if I'm. If anybody sees me here, if I'm doing this with a teacher, like, is this going to get back to my, yeah. my colleagues and then they're going to be, you know, yelling at me or there's going to be some kind of something that happens as a negative consequence of mm -hmm. me letting loose. Like if mm -hmm. I lose control even a little bit, bad things are going to happen. I just thought that it was supposed to be funny that she was being weird about it. And I didn't think it was funny. Oh, I didn't necessarily think that was supposed to be funny, but, but really? maybe it was. But I think it was huh. supposed to be funny that she was like, once she did finally loosen up, she really she loosened into up. She the yeah. next thing, yeah. Um, how do we feel about the kids getting into Battle of the Band because he said that they were terminally ill? I feel like that was very weird. Did you, have you ever watched the House, the TV show? Yes. I recognize that guy that's running Battle of the Bands. I recognize him as a patient from an episode of House. Oh, fun. Where he got some kind of brain disease because he worked around manure. He was like a manure salesman or something. And it like uh, prevented him from having any kind of filter. And so he's just like, you know, saying all of this super sexy mm -hmm. stuff by the women doctors and stuff like that. And so I remember House like brings Cuddy in at the very end, like right before they heal him. And once he knew what was going on, because it was like, oh, he's going to side, he's going to take on the personality of whoever has the more dominant personality in the room. And he like proved that it, he was, yeah. Anyway, I was like, that's that guy. It's, that's it's, that guy. Uh, it's manure guy. I did not recognize him from that. Yeah. I didn't love how they were late. And yeah, super or, late. Or they closed down early. I don't know. Yeah. And then he got all up in there trying to get the, the audition, they were going to escort him out. And then it had to, the idea of being sick had to have come from the kids because they were like laying on the ground and, and like they're like, don't take no stuff. for an answer. Yeah. And I don't think that's very realistic. No. I mean, the whole battle of the band things, isn't that realistic? Like you're telling me, cause even when we get to like the final big finale, final performance, we've there's going to be some type house. of waiver that they have to have parents sign to perform absolutely the there are this is like during the day like a weekday which is not realistic there's so many white adults just standing there like there's no people of color in this entire place and it is absolutely packed and they're listening to like some weird soft rock band which is the band that won yes. the same guys that kicked jack yes. black out previously okay and they're like fine but not interesting no. you know they're just like being like yeah whatever and there's all of these people there. And I was like, this is so unrealistic. What even is this venue? You know, with the stage that sticks like way out. And I don't know. I thought that, I thought the whole Battle of the Band thing was weird. Yeah. Was it rigged, do we think? And that's why the kids didn't win? Because they were, even though they were better, they were just all, always going to give it to that one 
to that band. I don't know that it was her. rigged, but I know I would not have thought the kids would be a viable number one slot. No matter even if they were good, which I thought they played very well, but they're not going to give them a check. Why? Because they don't need it. But he thinks they do. Who's he? Oh, he thinks because they're he thinks sick. He thinks because they're sick. But shouldn't just go to whichever. I mean, what's the point of the check? Like, what's going on here? How does he make enough money from ticket sales? He made more than $20,000 plus like entry fees or something. I think the idea was they wanted scouts to see them to potentially set up a record deal. But they would also get money to help go towards their record. So the record labels are doing some of this financing to get it put on and have there be a prize yeah, and all that kind of stuff. that's what okay. I assumed. Yeah. Now, if you think about for the kids and they're sick and don't they need the money, I think it's more along the lines of kind of the make-a-wish type thing where they just <laughs> wanted to play. Yeah. And that's what he was Oh, they just want to play? Yeah. Fine. They so you didn't play. think that this, the Jack Black School of Rock band was better than the one that went before it? I definitely did. Yeah. Then why didn't they win? Because I don't think they were part of the competition in that way. Uh, I don't think that the record gotcha. label people took them as a part of the competition. Interesting. I don't know. I guess my perspective is that a record label, that's a big business. They've got to be very bottom line. And if... Who's going to sell more records? If it's the kids, give it to the kids. Like Aaron Carter was 12 when he was putting out solo records and Michael Jackson and all kinds of little kids. So I would have thought they'd be a little more cold and calculating about it. Maybe not. Um, The band name School of Rock is a bad band name. That's what I think. Discuss. I don't have a strong opinion either way. <laughs> I don't care. What were the I, well, other ones they suggested, like the butterflies or whatever, yeah, and stuff like that? Very in the beginning? weird names. Yeah. I think it makes sense for the classes and actual kind of school that they come up with at the end of the film. Right. Yes, absolutely. That totally translates. But as a band name, yeah. it doesn't really make sense. It doesn't really make sense. But. I mean. Maybe using Horace Green, like H, some kind of HG, like if they're really trying to tie it into their existing school. Maybe. I didn't like it. Oh, the other line I laughed at is when he's trying to convince Roz to let them go on the field trip. And he's going, they're going to hear all of the, you know, all of the, the classics, all of the legends. Beethoven, Mozart, Enya. <laughs> and, yeah. and just sort of trails <laughs> off. And I was like, nice. That's good. I like that. <laughs> That was funny. No discussion about the teacher's night and all the parents being in there. Teacher's night was kind of weird. It's really weird that the cop showed up. Yes. To do what exactly? He didn't arrest Jack Black as far as right. we can tell. He ran away, right. I guess. Um, wh on what and charges was he going to arrest How him? ridiculous is it that I just, I don't know about this whole thing. Um, Sarah Silverman and Shavely, yeah. he gets the check and Dewey's like, just give me two days and I'll fix this. I'll fix it or whatever. Yeah. And she comes in, sees it. And apparently they call the cops and they're waiting outside the classroom door. Yeah. And I feel like that just would have been handled completely differently. It's all weird. They would have called the school and said, Hey, this is happening. And Roz would have handled it as yeah. the principal administrator of the school. Yeah, I think they just wanted to get a big scene with all of the parents in the principal's office. And I didn't understand. She walked out and stood in the corner in the stairwell. Like, stairwell. And I was like, what is this? What is happening? Is she am I supposed to be invested in her arc from being like, I used to be fun, but now I'm uptight. And then I'm going to break back into being fun again because that's I'm not seeing that happen here. She just goes in and is like, your kids are missing. I, and like, I don't like understand you, what character progression we had from her. I feel like they just wanted to convey that she has the ability to be fun. But she is legitimately under a lot of pressure. Yes. OK. But I don't, I don't think you're supposed that. to get super tied into it. Well, you're then just supposed a lot of her. to see. There's too much of her then. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I like her. I think okay. she does great in this. Okay. Um, 
but that's so that's the night that happens and Dewey's running away and then the next day all the parents are back again all which those parents is took the day ridiculous off ridiculous and unrealistic completely do they have a group text oh i'm sure they had a group text but it's a group it's an or email a facebook chain facebook group this or, is 2003 or an email chain they had they had facebook in no 2003 worrying. jeremy facebook 2003 i've not seen social network by the way, that's not going on the list. It hit my brain in like 06. Oh, because you hate um Yes. The director. No. Don't no. like Jesse Eisenberg. Free Facebook. Free Facebook. By Email one year. Thread. I just want to say by MySpace one year. MySpace group. Oh yeah. yeah that's How I about thought. MySpace? They could have MySpaced it. it. Could have MySpaced it a little bit. Let's be honest. It was probably an email chain. Or a fancy prep school like Horror Screen probably has their own chat forum. For parents? Yep. Yeah. How did the kids get on the bus? At what point did the principal sign off on, we need a bus that's this big with a driver here at the school at this time? Does, because the is principal that has how to sign that off happens? on that. For sure. Like, As a teacher, I don't have some kind of website I can go to to be like, all right, I'm checking it out. I'm clicking here. Yes, we need a driver bus co- coming here at this time. So if you want to do a field trip. <laughs> I don't know how I would do that. I would immediately... I just email the principal back. Hey, I was thinking about going to a Mexican restaurant or whatever. And the principal will be like, "Okay, I'll take care of all the logistics." I think his secretary would. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure that I would have to, you know, send a paper home to parents, oh, yeah. or like I would. There would be a, some kind of form for me to fill out. That's like, here are the standards. It's going to. Hey, here's what we're going to do. It's going to be from this time. This time, I'm sure mm-hmm. I'd have to do all that kind of stuff. But I, I don't think I handle the. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they'd tell me. I've never organized a field trip before. Um, I did. That's not true. I did, when I was at Lakeview my last year, I taught a heritage Spanish class where it's like for native speakers, right? So it's me and a bunch of 14-year-old Mexican and Puerto Rican children. And we walked from Lakeview to the Mexican restaurant oh, that like, you could see from it. We took yeah. Taqueria El Comal. Yes. And I made them like order in Spanish and they brought their own money and they just like got tacos and horchata. And we just kind of like sat there and ate some food and then we like walked back. Like that's all we did. How many kids? Uh, like 14 to, to 16. Isn't that a small, is that the one that's the grocery store too, or is that the other no, one? No, that's County City. Okay. Say. So there was seating and everything yes. for them. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. We got, we just got like four tables that were all sort of right by each other. And Love that. Okay. So you didn't have to really do anything for logistics because you I don't even know if I asked permission back. for some, like I don't, in my head, I'm like, I don't remember going to the principal and being like, it's okay if I do this, right? Because we just did it. Oh, so, well, it's not a private school, so. True. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Well, that principal, she was not that different from uh, Joan Cusack in this movie. So. I don't Other understand. Other than she's maybe half the height. How they, how half the height. How they got on the bus and they're like, we got to go pick up Mr. Yeah, Schneebly. that's nonsense. <laughs> it's absolutely the, the, nonsense. There's no bus driver that's like, okay, where, what's his address? Like, yeah. they don't, and, they don't they have his address. Also. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me just get in the school directory here and. Yeah, I don't. I have a whole thing about that. And then Rachel, this is my first Rachel quote. So the two boys, um, Frankie the drummer, and then Freddie, Freddie the drummer, Freddie the drummer, and then Larry the piano yes, the keyboardist, Lawrence. Are those the two Lawrence. Those are the two that go Lawrence up. Lawrence is good up. at piano. Yeah, <laughs> but he says it like in an Asian accent when he says Lawrence is good at piano, doesn't he? Um. Oh no, I did laugh when Jack Black did an impression of him. When he's talking to the parents and trying to convince them that this is all actually fine. Oh, and he yeah. Goes, and he's like, there's I'm a kid not named cool. Larry who's like, I am not cool. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, that's kind of funny. I mean, it's racist, but it's kind of funny. Um, so those two are up there waking him up. Jack Black stands up with no shirt on, looks out the window, and all the kids are just not in the bus for no reason. Which in would front of never the bus. Happen. One sitting on top of the bus. Rachel's like, why is there a child on top of the bus? Why is iCarly wearing a French painter's beret? Because she's a preppy little kid. That's real preppy. I mean. Maybe that's just the only hat option that comes with her uniform. Probably. I love it. I would wear it. Mm-hmm. So then, I th- was there a scene cut out? They get to the Battle of the Bands. They're like, you're the next one's on. You're, you guys are late. You got to get right out of there. Okay, we'll get it. We'll get it. And then. From then, no time passes that we see on screen other than we meet a kid named Gordon who's apparently super important because he's in charge of the lights who yeah, we never saw we've once seen before. Him before. Yeah. Barely. I mean, like, he was one of the guys that was over like, him as existing in Mrs. the class. Mrs. What's-Her-Face is coming. 
Then is he a tech guy or is he a security guy? I think he's a little of both. He just, we started saying his name a lot in the last five minutes of the movie and having one-on-one -on -one Jack Black conversations, yes. which and th that was only reserved for Guitar Boy and iCarly. Those were the only two kids that we had those kind of conversations with prior to Well, that. and Lawrence, when he had the I'm Not Cool and Tamika he when she had the I'm singing. Cool. We did have Tam Tamika, that's true. I would count Tamika in that group as well. So I just keep going, what is happening with Gordon? But like there's no break. Well, there's no time on screen that we're seeing, but we go from the kids are in their regular uniforms to a very complicated hairstyles. You yeah. know what I mean? Like yeah. there were supposed to be five minutes that passed and Lawrence has all the spikes and the yes. other kids have spiked hair and the, the girls had their hairs all teased out and they're in these crazy outfits and stuff. I'm like, how did this, okay, when, that's when did this happen? a little unrealistic. I, it was like there was a scene that we missed. Like they should have had Ned get up on stage and vamp for a little bit and we could cut back to him a couple of times being like, huh? How about airline food, guys? Because he's just the weird, pitiful little dude. They do, I think they do a good job with the last song. Oh, yeah. This is where the movie, I'm like, this okay, is this is what I thought song. the movie was going to be. I thought they'd go to a couple concerts and do this kind of stuff. And that part, I was like, yeah, the kids are pretty much rocking. The kids aren't good actors, but no, they not are like doing a pretty good job playing the music and stuff. Which I'm pretty research. sure they were all all learned and had musical well the guitarist and the drummer at least for sure this is their only like acting credit and they were picked like they were cast because they were really good for their age of the guitar and the drums mm -hmm. so that wasn't they weren't making any of that up i don't know i didn't look into the bassist and larry but uh zach and freddie i did look at because freddie i thought i recognized him something else but it wasn't he else. was a pretty good zach was not very good, but Freddie was like right. pretty typical. What are they? 12, 12 year old boy. Very like Draco Malfoy. Yes. Yes. So he was like 14. He's like three years older than the guitarist kid. So he was a little older than the other kids, I think, which probably helped a little with that. But which is the same as early Draco Malfoy is older than. Yeah. Like the rest Emma, of them. Watson and Ron. Yeah. Well, Rupert's a little Just older. Just play than the song, Schneebly. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Rachel did say, what was the point of having a cop there? That's another Rachel, another Rachel quote. Like at Battle of Bands or at the parents' night? At the parents' night. I hadn't, we, we, we got to the end and we were like, okay, what, so why was the sense? cop there? Yeah. yeah. Just trying to go back to that. The song is pretty good, but here's my thing. So it's School of Rock and it's about rock and roll and he's wanting them to get into the rock headspace, the stick it to the man. We're doing all that stuff, but we're ignoring really big parts of the rock and roll subculture, right? I mean, it's called, the phrase is sex, drugs, and rock and roll mm -hmm. right, for a reason. And rock is countercultural. And, but all he was saying is stick it to the man. And so I thought we were going to get a little more parents, uh, maybe um, Freddie and a couple of the boys were going to smoke weed or something at the very least. Um, but he, he just like, it loses some bite for me when it's just about like, it's just the music and like mosh in just to mosh. It's like a little, have you ever watched someone play guitar hero? Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point you're like, I don't know. They're just kind of pressing buttons on here and up on the screen. It's just like dudes going, yeah, but like no one's ever doing any of the real like rock stuff. And so yeah. it's, 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 a, it's sanitized. It was, it's like a sanitized version well, of yeah. the importance of rock and roll. And so the kids, it, it being an important part of the kids' lives and them really buying into it, that's why that it loses that for me. I'm like, that's unrealistic if it, we're not really getting into what what was rock and why type of stuff. I, wanted a, I want a gritty reboot where iCarly gets addicted to black tar heroin. <laughs> and... Um, there's, yeah, no people of color are allowed in the band or something ridiculous. I feel like with everything you learn, though, you can't learn it all the nuances at once. Yeah. So to me, it's not necessarily unrealistic that that's the yeah. area he chose not to unrealistic. focus on. Uh, yeah, I agree. I agree that's not unrealistic, but it doesn't have, it doesn't like land for me because the kids the kids are, are really going through the motions yeah. I mean, he's teaching them he's teaching them like the windmill strum and stuff and he's just kind of copying it from a video he saw and he, it's not in his heart the kids don't care i mean even when they're supposed to be like jamming out to rock music yeah. it's like very they're sitting in the back of his van and they're they're like just kind of bobbing their heads like mamas and the papas or something like they're not there's no head banging ever like 
I've, I've, when Freddie went to hang out with those dudes in the back of the van, yeah. I was like, here we go. Like, we're getting into the seedy underbelly of whatever rock and roll culture is in 2002. Like, and then it, they kind of didn't go back to that. Which the, the whole takeaway from that for me was that Black J- Jack Black, sorry, um, was like, are you kidding me? What are you doing? He's 12 or something like yeah. that. So he's yelling at the, the adults and he's sort of yelling at Freddie because he's like, has to be the responsible adult now. Yeah. And he's... He cares about the kids and he's growing yeah. up and he's maturing for sure. Yeah. It's just that's... I think I'm just kind of describing like why some of this stuff yes. fell flat for me a little they bit. They definitely it's left It's because the kids were out. not... Kids were not really... Their hearts weren't in it for the most part. The girls, the dancing girls, I mean like... I don't know. It's pretty stilted, like doing the monkey mm-hmm. and like kind of like going back and forth just really slow, like... Like some of the production value, some like, of that could have been a little They're twelve. Bit. This is giving them the opportunity to explore that something that they had no idea if was at really a child there. Child battle of the bands, sure. If it's something that's if if this is more bad news bears battle of the bands, and the kids were any good, and then they learned how to get better because this was really their dream, and they're competing against the other age level ones, and he's. Um, what's the Keanu Reeves movie where he gets too many DUIs and has to coach Hard, a baseball team and the kid, Hard, one of the boys oh. dies? Yeah. If it's one of these situations. Spoilers. He finally, well, we're not doing hardball for the, po- I'm not doing hardball for the podcast. So, um, and Jack Black's doing it because he has to, and then he begrudgingly falls in love with them and it's important to him. That's a different story. I think like they don't have to, it doesn't have to be that good. But if the whole point is that these kids actually were amazing and no one realized yeah. it. And the they, whole point and he was just to is play like, you, a really good rock show. But who whose idea was that? Who cares about that? Only Jack Black. Only Jack Black. He he's like, you're in music class, and they say accurate. And he's like, okay, now you're a rock guitarist. You, Larry, who you're really good at piano. You're playing rock music now. And he's like, because you told me to, I will do that. But when he, when he solos, when he solos at the end over the weird exit credits mm-hmm. that I'm sure you loved because they were non traditional credits, he goes <laughs> he, he goes ding 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 ding. ding like it's all just like very oriental like you know the early 20th century like chinese you know east asian music he doesn't he wasn't like yes i'm super into synth now like he doesn't none of them are you don't see passion coming out of them for it so i guess i the thing that i brought to the surface was Mm -hmm. them having the confidence to try something new and be okay with it I wasn't sure that they were doing that because they were actually putting themselves out there. I thought they were like, this is the project that we are being told is for class. And then, I mean, at the very end, they're like, let's go ahead and go do it. And that's that's why it picked up for me because I saw some like gumption from the kids yeah. but then even up on stage they're just going through the motions they're they're, they're they're play acting at rock well maybe that's because they're all not really actors agreed okay yeah. <laughs> my like third line is the kids are not very good actors we okay. can all agree on this right i thought it was crazy like some of the things that i pulled out were gordon coming up with the new light setup I guess. I don't really know what that means. You see him well, at a board going like, burp, 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 burp. like, how does, how is he making all these things happen in time? I don't know. With knowing your software. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like think of the complication to get the stupid buttons on the board to play right. Brayden's beef at the right time Agreed. and all the stuff. Like, yeah. it's just like, he had the ability to do that. The security guards are great. Yeah. I mean, I think that they just, they grew these skills they didn't necessarily know they had, and they had an opportunity to go in a non-traditional route with them. Yeah. I guess that's my thing. Sure. It just didn't, but it's it didn't not make it same. an entertaining movie yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I liked the last few minutes. I thought the pacing was weird before that, before the last 20 minutes. I get... I was surprised at how they handled the ending. We went straight from they come out and do an encore and then it's really long credits. And now we see that he's teaching an after school rock music sort of lesson classes, things. And Rachel and I are trying to do the math. I'm like, is this really financially viable for him? You know, depending on all the parents are, are totally flipped and are completely in on it now. Maybe. But we didn't tie up. We didn't tie up. I want. We needed another scene on the on Principal Roz. Yeah. 
to really see I am her very development. upset with you. Yeah, but also you were great. Yeah. And so now she's not uptight anymore? I don't know. They didn't win. That surprised me. I It surprised me that the parents were like, what? No. Yeah. And, and they, they got were everyone to cheer and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. The parents do love their kids. It's not just about high performance in school. They did. They do like that the kids were passionate about it, but I didn't see the passion. I didn't see the passion. I didn't feel it. I needed Zach to fight to have a yelling fight with his dad about how rock is important to me, and that's my life now, and you don't understand me. Why not have this be freshman high school? Why have it be fifth graders? Because it's cuter that they're little? I don't know. I don't know. I feel Maybe. like if they were freshmen, there's a whole lot more attitude he would have had to overcome to get. Sounds like a movie. Sounds like we've got conflict. Or also, didn't they do that with Sister Act too? Colon back in the habit. Yes. And yes, actually. I feel like if I'm looking at this from a movie producer type perspective, I buy the fifth grade-ish area because I have seen a lot of the whole high schoolers have attitudes and you have to teach them something kind of films. They're just trying to go off the beaten, beaten path, path a little, a little bit, bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I would buy that. Sure. I think that makes maybe. sense. Can we talk about Miranda Cosgrove? iCarly is cast in this movie despite per her own admission, being unable to sing or dance or play an instrument. So what made them cast her? Did they have a type in their brain that was like, and one of the girls isn't actually good at music, but is going to be a bossy little Is she so not so. good at music? She plays clarinet, and he's like, uh, okay, No, I, I mean, in real that. life. I thought I she no was, idea. she can sing well, in real life. I one of the singers. Why'd they have her be little Miss Beret? I don't think they wanted her to sing because they wanted, they needed the band manager. They needed somebody to pull up that. They kind of wanted to hit that. They didn't that. want to typecast it, right? Like well, they wanted her to be. Oh, I'm going the other way. I think they're like, we're at a prep school. One of these little girls is going to be like, I'm going to tell the principal and we're going to have to give her a power job and be like, do that kind of thing. I mean, they could have done that with one of the little boys too. Absolutely. That's my question. So I, I think, thought that. So Yes, I agree with you then. They wanted somebody to have, like, the, I'm going to tell the teacher yeah. if I don't get to have a more exist, involved yeah. role. Yeah. Role. Yeah. Role. I almost said rule. Rule. I thought, the whole time I'm watching this movie, I'm like, they're just casting her because of Drake and Josh, and they're writing the coattails, and even though she's not any good at band stuff, and they're finding a role for her. So now my head is flipping on that, knowing that Drake and Josh hadn't come out yet, and this is her start. Miranda Cosgrove could sing. Okay. So her not being able to sing was just for this movie. Maybe she couldn't sing at that time. I don't know, but it was good acting for her to be really horrible at the song that she sang in this movie. Yeah. School of Rock, I would, I am hard pressed to picture myself watching again. Yeah. Me personally, what about you? Oh, I would probably watch it again. I mean, yeah. I, I actually, let me rephrase. It is not something I will seek out to watch again, mm -hmm. unless I'm like, oh, you haven't seen this, you should watch it to somebody. It's Come something, on the podcast. Something comes up that I think is directly related to School of yeah. Rock, and I think they would like it. Mm-hmm then I might watch it again. I'm not going to seek it out to watch it again. But if it's on TV and I'm not doing anything, I might leave it on. Yeah. I, I don't know if it makes me want to try another Jack Black vehicle. Because people are making Nacho Libre references to me that I'm not getting. But I don't think that's a good... It's not like a highly rated movie, Nacho Libre. Smallville with Jack Black? Oh. Oh, wow. Miranda Cosgrove was young Lana Lang on Smallville, the, the little with their fairy princess outfit during the first meteor shower. Fun, fun fact. Talk about a TV show I know absolutely nothing about. So School of Rock, not whimsical enough for Rogi. Perfect amount of whimsy for Jess. Not, yeah, not you perfect. You know, that's interesting because you, you liked Fantastic Mr. Fox. Maybe School of In Rock In what way are we comparing Fantastic Mr. Fox and School of you're Rock? You're the one who's pulling out the George whimsy Clooney, word. George Clooney, Meryl Streep, no, Julia Roberts. You're the one who's pulling out the whimsy word. Bill Murray. But I'm wondering if maybe, like, you need it to be a little more artsy to like I it. I definitely need it to be a little more artsy. A little less comedy, a little more artsy. A little less conversation, a little more action. Truly. 
obviously I do definitely do need more Wes Anderson. I needed more. If there had been 25% more kids playing rock and roll music and seeming excited about doing it, I would have actively liked this movie. So you didn't like that they were talking about the drummer for whoever, Katie, the bass player, and Freddie? I don't understand what you're asking. They're walking through the hallway and they're mm-hmm. arguing about drummers. That was drummers. great. That was a great scene. Okay, you just wanted more of that yes. kind of thing. Yes, because okay. Freddie's the only kid at this to this day, the only kid that I buy was like got into the rock and roll part of it. Okay. Because he went and watched Neil Peart and whoever else, all of these like famous old time drummers. And is like, yeah, drumming. And then, and she lists Meg White from the White Stripes. And he's like, well, it doesn't count. And like, that was good. Like she, she had done some research and he had done some research and they, I liked when he was giving them homework. I liked the, that whole idea. I mean, it it just, we didn't lean into some of these things enough, right? Oh, he is a teacher. He really is teaching them things. He's realizing he has a calling for education or the kids are getting really into rock music. We just dabbled. They gave me like one little thing and kind of all of these directions. So more of that and you would have been on board. Yeah, pick a lane. Okay, Mm -hmm. okay. More of, yeah, more of, there's a, there's a, there's a few different ways that I think it could have become a movie that I really enjoyed. Yeah. I'm not against the premise. The execution was off for me. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you disagree. Oh, I should, before we close out. You should look though. up the phone number. Um, yes, I should do that. Jeremy, I keep but, telling people that you're going to put the phone number in the show notes. Is that happening? Fantastic. Uh, School of Rock became a real life after school music class. Taught by Jack Black? IRL, no. Mm. So someone had the bright idea of naming their after-school music class School of Rock. I couldn't find out if they were actually connected, and I right. don't know that they are, but yeah. And that makes sense. My brother went to piano lessons. There's people that take private lessons yeah. for their, especially in a big city. Was this supposed to be set in New York? I couldn't tell. Similarly big cities, East Coast. Yeah, maybe like not Boston, but it could have been New York, could have been Philadelphia, could have been Baltimore. If you really love School of Rock, you think that Jack Black farting is hilarious. Um, you uh, don't mind pacing issues and you think that I'm totally wrong, uh, please uh, hit us up at FlabberPod on Instagram. Um, please c- call or text us at the phone number uh, 240-668-4376, which is 240-MOVIE-76. Um, we would love to hear from you. Um, we would love for you to subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and uh, leave us some five-star ratings. Love those stars. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.